Hi everybody, thanks for joining. Uh, this is another one in our series of yoga every day. And today's practice is going to be focused on the upper part of uh, the body, specifically more around the opening of the chest, shoulders and upper back. So this is an area that um, many people are, are quite tight these days, especially with all the time that we spend on devices, phones and iPads and laptops and so forth. So we do spend quite a lot of time in a slightly forward, um, hunched over sort of uh, position. Um, so this practice today is focused on really lifting it and broadening and opening in that area. So I hope you enjoy it. A couple of things that would be useful to have. Um, be useful to have a strap or a, this is a yoga strap. You could use a belt, soft belt, um, preferably. And then also I'm going to be using a couple of blocks. Now I've got yoga blocks. Um, you can use books, uh, quite big books. The old fashioned telephone directories used to be really good for this. Um, and also, or maybe you could, if you don't have anything like this, you could have um, some really firm folded up blankets. And also I'm going to be using a chair. Um, so I have a yoga chair folded, but you can use a dining table chair, it will be fine for what we're going to do. So let's come on to our mats and we're going to start in child's pose today. So let's wide and our big toes together and then reaching forward through the arms, extending into the fingertips. Keep the head for now in line with the arms, so ears in line with the upper arms. And then while we're here, just for a few breaths here, we're just going to focus on lengthening through the upper body. So we're lengthening the fingertips away from our hips, so fingertips are pressing the floor away with our hands, and then we're lengthening the hips towards our feet. So trying to take the hips down to the feet and just letting the upper body come down towards the floor. So um, you might feel your rib cage as you breathe expanding against your thighs. And then just breathing here lengthening, enjoying that long stretch through the upper body. And one of the things you can do here, it's quite a subtle movement, but you can focus on uh, rolling the upper arms out. So the uh, think about the upper arms from the elbow up to the shoulder, we're rolling the inner arms out. And what that does is broadens that space between the shoulder blades. Okay, and then we're going to come up from there. So walk the hands in, come up from there, come up onto your knees. Do a few uh, uh, cat cow movements. So to get the, the right position of the hands, so underneath the shoulders, hips and knees are in line with each other. So we start in this neutral position and then we're going to roll through the spine. So we start from the tailbone. So lifting the tailbone up towards the ceiling, rolling up through the spine, lifting the chest, lifting the head, looking up at the top of the wall in front of you. And then rolling back down, start the movement from the tailbone. So taking that down to the floor now, rolling up through the spine, lifting up, between the shoulder blades and then back the other way and generally when we're coming this way now lifting the chest and doing that on the inhale normally it's not not prescribed to whatever works for you and then exhaling generally as we bring in the head and chest down rolling up between the shoulder blades one more of this movement it's enjoying that feeling of opening up through the spine 
and then back here and then just letting the head come to the floor as we lift up between the shoulder blades. Stay here a moment, really extending the shoulder blades up now and then coming back to a neutral spine position and then come into sitting position and cross legged. Cross legs or you can sit in what we call hero pose, the knees together and the feet apart, doesn't matter which one you sit in. Have that strap handy. And so the reason we're sitting, I want to sit for a, a few minutes now while we do some shoulder and arm movements. And um, so we want to be able to keep the spine and nice and straight. So it helps to be sitting on a firm support, which lifts the sit bones up and allows us to keep the back nice and upright while we do these movements. So first one is a simple one in terms of we're going to interlace the fingers, extend the palms away, straighten the arms as much as you can. So we're drawing the elbows in towards each other and then lifting the arms up alongside the ears. So we're taking the arms back alongside the ears and then lifting up into the palms of the hands. So we're really lengthening through the spine here again. So we're grounding the hip bones, the sitting bones, and lifting up through the whole of the upper body into the palms of the hands. Try not to hug the shoulders up, so try to let the shoulders you know, stay down away from the ears just while we're lifting up the arms. And then we're bring the arms back in front of us, change the interlace of the fingers, so the other finger now goes on top, extend the palms away and up to the ceiling again, drawing the elbows in towards each other, lengthening through the whole of the upper body. And then releasing the arms from there. Um, this next one very is a very simple pose actually, and a very simple position movement to do. Really great if you're someone who spends a bit of time at a desk or over a over a laptop or computer for your job maybe. So I just take do this a few times a day. It's really helpful. So we're starting just in this position, simple position with the arms up, elbows in line with the shoulders. And then we're just going to take the arms back behind us, so keeping the, the, that right angle bend in the arms. So now we're squeezing the shoulder blades together and then come back so that the shoulders are, um, elbows are in line with the shoulders and then take them back again, opening up that front chest area, squeezing those shoulder blade area and then back again. And one more time. It's quite a, um, a small movement. It can be a really nice way of opening up that front front chest area here. Okay, and then releasing the arms from there. The next one, taking the arms out to the side, and we're going to bring both arms together. So right arm on top, both arms together right elbow on top of the left elbow, bend the arms and then draw the palm of the hands together so you may not actually get the palms of the hands touching. I've got my left fingers now on my right palm and then draw the elbows up so they're in line with the shoulders and then see if you can then draw the elbows away from you forwards. So really opening up that space now between the shoulder blades. And lifting the elbows and drawing them away from you. And then release from there, release the arms back to centre and then we'll do the same on the other side. So start with the arms out, cross the arms over the left elbow on top of right, bend the arms there and then 
and the hands to face each other. And then lift the elbows in line with the shoulders. And then take the arms away from you. Can you feel that space between the shoulder blades opening? Can you feel any tension there? Can become quite tight that area. And then release again from there. The next one is where we need the strap or the belt if you have it. Well, you might not, some people don't. So this time we're going to clasp the hands behind our back in this position, but behind our back, okay? So we're going to, if, you're going, if you think you might need a strap, just hook it over your shoulder. Take the right arm out, palm facing behind you, and the left arm out, palm facing forwards. And then scoop that right hand up behind the back. So now the back of my right hand is against my back between the shoulder blades. And the top arm comes up and then down. And we take hold of the fingertips if you can. Or maybe you can even clasp the hands together. Or you take hold of the strap, one side of the strap in each hand, and draw the hands towards each other. And then we are focusing on drawing that upper shoulder, so that's the left shoulder, drawing that back behind you, and the elbow, the top elbow back behind you. Try and keep the neck nice and free, so we don't want to constrict movement in the neck, and while we're doing this, you should still be able to move your head around. A couple more breaths here. Trying to get a really good grip on each hand and then releasing the arms from there. If you're using the strap, you can take it over to the other shoulder and bring the arms out. This time the left hand faces back behind me and the right hand forward. And then bend that left elbow, draw that hand up between the shoulder blades. Back of the hand now is on my back and then top arm comes up, bend the elbow, bring the hands together, fingertips or palms of the hands or wherever you can reach. Now we're using that strap and walk the strap, walk the hands up the strap towards each other. So trying to get a good connection here between the hands. A couple more breaths here. And then release the arms from there. Come back to centre. So you can take, put that strap aside now. And we're going to come into a downward dog. Briefly, so move the blocks off your mat. So hands forward, slightly wider than shoulder width, and then come up into down dog pose. So we just, we've been sitting on our legs uh, for a few minutes there, so just gently opening the backs of the knees, stretching the backs of the legs. You can walk through one leg at a time, bending the knee as you stretch the other leg, and then Posing leg there. So walking one leg at a time, taking the heels to the floor, and then do both legs now. So lift the heels of both feet up, really stretch up before we take the heels down. We're going to really lengthen from our hands up our arms, sides of the body up to the hips, and then look, and then taking the heels down to the floor from there. So nice, long front body, lengthening down the backs of the legs as well. Just a few breaths here. And then walk the 
the feet in, come into standing for bend for a moment. So letting the upper body dangle, you can take hold of the elbows, or you can have your hands on your shins or floor. And then hands on the hips, looking forwards, coming up to standing. So next one, um, I'm going to, uh, no, I will do it. I was going to say, I'll turn around, but I won't turn around. We'll do it this way. So step the feet wide apart. I'm going to take, have the feet um, facing forward. So feet are parallel now, facing forward. Taking the hands on to the hips. And then we're going to draw the elbows back and then lift the chest up towards the ceiling, have a little back bend here, really focusing on opening that chest area up to the ceiling, taking the elbows back, squeezing that space between the shoulder blades again, and then coming back up to centre, and then coming into parallel position. So upper body now is parallel, to the floor, head is in line with the spine, supporting ourselves here with our abdominal muscles and the legs working strongly. So try and uh, in this place fit, get that movement of scissoring the legs towards each other without actually moving the feet. Okay, so it's just a, a, an internal action which activates all the leg muscles to hold us in position. And then coming back up to centre from there. And then next one we're going to clasp the fingers together um, like we did before, behind our back. Now draw the elbows back. See if you can revolve the upper arms out so that you can straighten the arms. So just turn them around so you can see what we're doing. So, Straighten the arms as much as you can here. And we start with our hands resting on our back. Again, as we lift the chest up towards the ceiling, extending the palms, uh, the arms away from us down our back. And then coming into that forward bend again from um, hinging from the hips. Upper body now is parallel to the floor. Arms are resting on our back, but drawing the elbows in and drawing the shoulders back as well. As we're, as we're doing this, keep the shoulders lifted. And then we're going to go a little bit further now. So we're going to take our crown of the head to the floor and you can let the hands come off the back and then bring the arms over the head just as far as they will go, using the weight of the arms to open up through the shoulders. And don't forget that scissoring action in the legs to support you. A couple more breaths here. Just enjoying that opening in that front chest area. And then to come out of this, lift the body back to parallel, bring the arms back onto the, on, resting on your back. And then back up to centre again from there. And then release the arms and step the feet in. So, um, yeah, one more we're going to do. Um, Similar to that, so we're going to I'll just rest the legs here a moment before we stretch the legs out wide again. Um, might not want the legs quite so wide in this next one, so now step the feet wide apart. <clears throat> and then we're going to hinge forward again from the hips and then take the left hand onto the outside edge of that right ankle. Draw the upper body round. So now we're twisting in the upper body as we draw the chest around to the right. And then you can lift that right arm up towards the ceiling. 
and maybe a little way back over to the other side. So we're twisting in the upper body now. Keep drawing the, the chest around to the right and then come back to centre and swap the hands over. So right hand on the outside edge of the left ankle. Draw the upper body round to the left now. And then you can lift that left arm up towards the ceiling. Keep, um, so keeping that pressure on of your hand on the ankle to draw the upper body around. So we're going to do that one more time, a little faster this time. Left hand on to right, lift that right arm up. And then back to the other side, right hand on left ankle. One more time. Left hand on right ankle. And then right hand on left ankle. And then back to centre. Hands on the hips, look forwards and come up to standing. And then put the feet in. So if you have a chair, Dining table chair is fine. We'll place the chair on the mat in front of us. And so you can either do this on your knees. Um, if, it's, if kneeling is hard for you, you can sit on the floor and bring the arms up. So we're going to bring the elbows up on to the chair and then Draw the chest through the arms. So the chest is coming down to the floor now and we're lengthening through the spine. Keep pressing down. If you're sitting with the legs, if you're sitting on the floor with the legs wide, keep um, pressing the legs onto the floor. So that's engaging the leg muscles to help you lift up out of the upper body. And then just resting the elbows on that chair, and letting the weight of the upper body draw the chest forward. It's opening again, opening of that front chest area. A few breaths here, and then I'll show you the other option as well, where we're kneeling on the floor. Couple more breaths here first. Okay, and then push yourself up off the chair, back up to sitting. So the kneeling version is bring kneeling in front of the chair, putting the elbows on to the chair. So you can either catch hold of the elbows in the same way. We can have the, the hands up, uh, lower arms up with the palms facing each other, and then bring the chest through towards the floor again. So because of your position now, so you've got the weight lifted, this is probably more of a stretch than that last one on that front body, so go easy with it, go gentle. Try not to arch too much in the lower back, because we're really looking for that extension through that um, upper back chest area and opening of the front shoulders. So just a few more breaths here, using the weight of the body to help us release. Quite a simple position really. You can do this any time of day really on, on anything. So you can even do this standing up and you putting your elbows on the end of a kitchen bench or a table to get the same action. So if you are somebody that spends time working at a desk over a laptop or something, then maybe get into the habit of doing this one regularly. So we're opening up the front body, 
chest, the shoulders. Okay, so we're going to come out of this carefully. So bring the hands back to the chair, lift the upper body, and then come back up to centre. So put the chair aside now. Now if you've got those blocks or maybe folded blankets, bring them back to the mat now. So we're going to spend a couple of minutes in a, uh, with legs elevated pose. So I'm going to place my blocks there. I'm going to get my lower back sacrum area on those blocks, fully supported by the blocks. So folded towels are fine for this if you have several folded towels quite firm blankets. So you can see, to get into it, I've got my hips on the right on the forward edge of those blocks now. So I'm not actually sitting on them. I'm right on the forward edge of the blocks. So then when I lie back, the whole of my lower back, back of my pelvis is now fully supported by blocks. I bring my upper body onto the floor, so shoulders are now on the floor. And then lift one leg at a time up towards the ceiling. So both legs are now straight. And if you've got the um, support under your lower back in the right position, it should be relatively easy to hold the legs up here. It's about just having the right centre of balance. But if you're struggling to hold the legs up, then maybe just adjust that support under the lower back. Maybe bring it further up or push it slightly further away. So it might be a small adjustment to get to the point where it's a sim simple balancing <coughs> to keep the legs up. And you can have the knees slightly bent if that's easier as well. So we're just going to spend probably another minute here Always good to finish your practice with some position of having the legs elevated above the heart. So it's a, a resting position for the nervous system. And these, in these um, positions with the legs up, can help to facilitate circulation as well, so we get increased blood flow back to the heart. Nice thing to do if you uh, if you're someone who spends a lot of time on their feet, maybe maybe you have a job where you're working, walking a lot, or standing, or maybe you just gone out for a very long walk today and your legs are tired. This is a nice way to relax them, relax the legs. Okay, just a few more breaths here. Bend the knees, bring the feet back to the floor, press the feet into the floor to lift the hips and remove that support from your back and then place your back down on the floor. And I'm going to lay ourselves out straight for a final relaxation pose, Shavasana. Um, so before we do that, just a little adjustment here, just lift the hips a fraction off the floor, extend the tailbone away from you, and then place your lower back back down. And you might find that's helped to lengthen through the lower back. And then so extend the legs now, one leg at a time, so both legs are now straight. Let the feet fall out naturally to the sides. 
shoulders released, the arms also resting on the floor, palms facing up. And then from here, just closing your eyes, drawing your attention inwards. Just take a moment to scan through your body and looking for any areas where you may still be holding on in the muscles and just letting go. So giving ourselves up fully to the support of the floor. So just breathing softly in and out through the nose. On each exhalation, maybe finding a little bit more uh, relaxation in the muscles. And then bringing your attention on to your breath. The next few minutes, just focusing on your breathing, just watching, observing the breath flowing in and out of the body. So keeping the body completely still. So I'll stay here for another couple of minutes in silence and stillness. Come out of this position, just gently start to bring a little movement back to your fingers and toes. And then one by one, bending the knees, bringing the feet back to the floor, hands back onto your abdomen. And then when you're ready, just rolling over to one side. And pushing yourself back up to sitting from there. And come back in to sitting position. So I hope you enjoyed the practice today. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for joining.